Hello, my name is Dr. J. Michael Bennett. I am an orthopedic surgeon who specializes in sports medicine. My specialties include mentally invasive surgery and arthroscopic surgery of the shoulder, elbow, and knee. I am CAQ certified in sports medicine and I'm with the Fondren Orthopedic Group. Today we're going to talk a little bit about knee pain, uh, particularly knee pain in younger individuals or younger patients with arthritic issues. Uh, or even older active patients who have knee pain. Uh, but I want to go just go over a general idea of what the knee looks like, uh, what the common symptoms are associated with uh, the knee pain, and how you can determine what the real cause of the knee pain is based on the types of symptoms that you're experiencing. So first off, starting with the anatomy. This here is a knee model. Standard knee, stabilized by four ligaments. You have a medial collateral ligament on the inside of the knee. You have a lateral collateral ligament on the outside of the knee. They give you stability with what we call varus and valgus stress. Okay, that means stressing from side to side on the knee. Within the central portion of the knee, you have two ligaments. They're called the cruciates. You have the anterior cruciate ligament and you have the posterior cruciate ligament. They crisscross each other in the middle of the knee. And these give you stability with rotation, as well as with anterior and posterior stability. The anterior cruciate ligament is the ligament you often read about and hear about. It's the most commonly injured ligament uh, that we see, particularly in uh, high contact or full contact sports. Another ligament that's commonly injured is the medial collateral ligament, which is here on the inside of the knee. Now within the knee itself, this yellow portion of the knee is actually bone, this blue portion of the knee is cartilage, and then these two discs within the knee are also cartilage, but they're a different type of cartilage. They're actually more of a softer cushion type of cartilage and a little bit more mobile than this type of cartilage here lining the bone. These are called meniscus. You have one on the inside of the knee, you have one on the outside of the knee. They're disc shaped see the difference in their sizes. This is a very common area to be injured, particularly in high con or high impact athletes and runners, patients that do a lot of twisting and turning activities. Um, but I've, had, I've seen patients that have injured their meniscus just by bending down and picking their children up. So it just depends on the patient themselves, it depends on their predisposing uh, type of uh, anatomy. Uh, on who gets a meniscus tear and who doesn't. And it can also, it also depends on the uh, mechanism of an injury. Typically, if you are running or if you're doing your activities and uh, you feel any kind of painful locking sensation or catching sensation within the knee, particularly when you twist or turn or cut, uh, this oftentimes can mean that you can have a cartilage injury in the knee. Most often, this is a meniscus tear. Now this needs to be verified with an orthopedic surgeon who has to also do an exam and oftentimes get an MRI to correlate with this, but the symptoms are per very much classic symptoms that are associated with meniscus tears. Usually the patient will come in and describe their uh, pain on one side of the knee or the other. It's not in the front of the knee. It's usually on the inside of the knee or the outside of the knee, right along the joint line. They can usually pinpoint where the pain is. And oftentimes they'll say, well, sometimes the pain's there, sometimes it's not. It's usually exacerbated with this activity or that activity. And I first noticed it when I was playing basketball with my friends. I did a twisting movement and I felt a pop. Now, it's important at this point in time that the orthopedic surgeon evaluate you because at that time they need to evaluate you to make sure that you also don't have a ligament injury as well as a meniscus injury. But if your knee feels stable, and it's not necessarily feeling like it's sliding on you, but it does catch and it does hurt when you twist or turn, then more likely it might be a meniscus injury. Now, that same patient that's felt a pop while they were playing basketball during a twisting mechanism may have felt a pop and then they describe, my knee gave out and ever since then I can't put weight on it because it feels unstable. That may be an anterior cruciate ligament injury, which is an ACL injury. And that, once again, needs to be evaluated by an orthopedic surgeon to confirm this. Because if it is indeed an ACL injury, the one test we do is called a Lachman's test. We actually flex the knee, 
about 30, 45 degrees of flexion, and actually stress the knee joint. And uh, if you have significant laxity with that knee on this exam, it tells us that the anterior cruciate ligament is disrupted or injured, and uh, you usually compare it to the opposite side because some patients have a little bit more lax ligaments than others. So if it is definitely di different on one side to the other and you have significant swelling in the knee and the patient describes that sense of instability, then it's probably an ACL and an MRI is indicated to confirm this. In addition, uh, we usually like to evaluate for the meniscus tear. And when we do that, we usually see if the patient has pain right along the joint line where this disc is located. And then we do what's called the McMurray's test where we actually rotate the knee and see if that disc is caught with rotation. If indeed that little flap of this disc is caught in that joint, it will cause pain in that position. Okay, and that will confirm uh, our suspicions of a meniscus tear. Now, other types of knee pain that you may experience, one very common type of knee pain is called patellofemoral syndrome, which is also code, known as anterior knee pain. We see this commonly in runners. Uh, we also see it commonly in patients that, uh, for whatever reason, may have a, a weaker vastus medialis, which is the, the inner aspect of the quad. When that inner aspect of the quad is weak, the kneecap starts to drift a little. So the quadriceps has four muscles that all insert right on top of the kneecap to help stabilize this kneecap and keep it within this groove here. If one of those muscles are imbalanced or one of those muscles is weak, the other muscles override that muscle. Typically, it's the largest muscle, which is the VMO, vastus medialis, which is this inner quad muscle. If that quad muscle is weak, the kneecap likes to drift out and it starts rubbing up against this condyle on the outside here. It will bother you when you do stairs, when you squat and kneel, when you're doing excessive jumping, when you're doing running. Some patients describe it as a tightness sensation. Some patients will even say they feel popping and clicking as they stand up from a seated position. And that just means that this kneecap is rubbing up against this outside area and irritating the cartilage area, the cartilage over here, and that's called patellofemoral syndrome. The good news is that the majority of these are treated non-operatively, treated with balancing the muscles out, building up the vastus medialis or this inner quad muscle, and uh, getting in a good stretching uh, regimen. So that's anterior knee pain or patellofemoral syndrome. So if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to visit my website, www.jmichaelbennett.com, or feel free to call my office at 281-633-8600. Thank you.